He's pretty good. Yeah. Where, who that is really that? Um, he's, yeah, he's right out here next to uh, that else? sports bar, Monmouth. Rookies. I mean, off yeah. Rookie, yeah, right next to this side of 99, but yeah. we're on, I, I, I say where Papa Murphy used to be because I got a Papa Murphy. Yeah. And, uh, Mucha is yeah, Mucha is, is in the same oh, thing. Yeah. Okay. My husband works for the lottery. We'll never win. Oh, where the only thing that drove me nuts, I hope he's yeah. fixed yeah. this. Yeah. When I went there, that rolling table, there was no grab bar. And, right. and so if your back's hurting you, it's really difficult. I guess we're live, so whenever you're ready to go. Okay. We're live. I'll uh, call this meeting to order. Okay. Uh, do we have a roll call? Oh, I get to do the roll call. Yep. yep. Uh, Commissioner Flores. Present. Uh, Barry. Uh, Barry. Commissioner Barry. Here. No one's there. There. Uh, Chair Tidmore. Here. Uh, Commissioner Devane. Here. Uh, Commissioner Young. Yeah, here. And Commissioner Waver is not available. Okay. Uh, she did call in. Uh, told us she will be on a flight. So. Um, all right. Flight. She's on a flight right now. Huh? So she can't attend by Zoom. Um, so we've got a um, draft copy of um, the minutes from April 17th. Does anybody have any corrections, additions, suggestions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for April 17th. We have a second. I wasn't here, but can I second it? I could second it. You could second it. I will. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a motion uh, that's been seconded. Any discussion? Okay. Those in favor of passing the minutes as uh, presented, say aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> minutes are passed. Uh, no visitors. So we don't have any public comments unless there's something to be read in the record. Nope. Staff reports. I don't really have any staff reports. Um, I figure we can talk about new business coming up here in just a second. Um, so we could just move right there if you'd like. Sounds like a plan. All right, cool. Uh, so, hey, um, I mean, I don't know how exactly I should go about this, but I thought that it might just be beneficial to sort of talk about standards just a little bit. And I mean, I don't know if we should house that sort of in our larger code or if we should just take a bit of it. I guess I will sort of go to our code real quick just so we can look at it. And remember, um, we sort of broke the code into uh, a variety of parts. And I'm supposed to share a screen once I do this so folks on the TV can watch as well. So our historic preservation code, it regulates things like new construction, it regulates things like rehabs, it regulates things like demolitions, right? And it's just sort of how it works. And so I've um, today, I really kind of wanted to talk about um, rehabs, just so we uh, can re get acquainted with the Secretary of Interior's standards. But I want uh, uh, before we get there, let's just sort of get a sense of how that fits within the district. All of your guys's purview is the historic preservation district, the the historic district of the City of Independence. Uh, so. It talks about things like how to add things to the local register that's within your code. We haven't done that since I've been here. We've talked about designating new resources in the code. We haven't done that since I've been here. Um, re-rating or removal of resources. We haven't done that since I've 
here. We've talked a lot about things like new construction in the historic district, and that's where a number of those codes that we've talked about um, sort of live. The thing that I would really like to talk about uh, a bit today, just because we had the question last time, is alteration or additions to structures. And you'll see how this section works is it talks about uh, sort of minor alterations, which is an alteration to a non-historic building or something that's uh, not contributing to the district. And it talks about uh, some of those things. If it is changing a historic element of a historic non-contributing resource, then it comes to you guys. If it's a uh, contributing resource, then it comes to you guys. And really the standards for that are this alterations and additions. So if it's an alteration to a contributing resource, uh, a historic feature of the non-contributing resource, all of that sort of stuff, it comes to you folks. Now, I guess I should just slow up just so we all know what we're talking about. When we talk about a contributing resource, it's something that contributes to the district, right? It's something that contributed to the designation of the district. And so um, not all historic buildings contributed to the, to the district. There's, there's historic buildings that are old that are not contributing. Um, and I'll get into some of those a little bit later because we can look at them and we can sort of, what I, my hope is that we can get a sense of what contributes to a historic resource. So then in the future, we know how to preserve that resource. Who right? makes the determination of contributing or non-contributing? This was all done in 1989, mm -hmm. uh, originally. Mm -hmm. And it's that designation document that is online. Um, it's this really designation document on your screen right now. It's on our website. This is what can, uh, classifies whether it's contributing or not. You can see um, 259 South Main, and this is compatible, non-contributing. So well, I mean, that tells us, but what determines what makes it contributing versus non-contributing? It's really the what's happened to the resource over time. And so we can look at that. We'll look at a couple later on. I, we have some pictures at the end of this document, and I'm really hoping that we can just kind of look at those pictures, see what's happened to those buildings. So we know as we move forward, what we should and shouldn't be doing to some of those resources. Right, so that's the goal. Um, as we get going though, I figured um, it might be beneficial just to sort of get a sense of some of this stuff. I was trying to find YouTubes. I like to show YouTubes to our planning commission. This is somebody out of Colorado explaining the, uh, the register. I don't know if I'm on exactly the right spot. I vote 253 uh, is what I said. Ah. All right, so let's see if this works. Um, we'll watch this for like 12 minutes. And then we can sort of ask any questions. We can start sort of thinking about this. All right. So locally designated property is made to be reviewed by a local circumcision board of commission and a process of control. Hear that okay. Review. The process is outlined in the local ordinance and compliance with the decisions made by the board may be voluntary or mandatory. The process is different for each community. Uh, but whatever decisions are made must be consistent with the criteria listed in the ordinance. So they need to be legally defensible. Um, communities may also develop design guidelines to further define the local requirements for additions or new construction in historic districts or for individually designated properties. Sort of what we do. And of course, this is the point where many people can become frustrated with the certain limitations. So let's discuss the how and why of these decisions and hope we can uh, give that background and have better understanding of where it comes from. So since the National Park Service, Service manages preservation programs, the Park Service is located in the Department of the Interior. The standards we follow are called the Secretary of the Interior Standards. Uh, well, I really doubt Secretary of the Interior, I'm not as well, but who knows? Um, 
There are standards and guidelines for a variety of things. The ones you're going to hear about most often are for the treatment of historic properties. So you may hear some of these terms used interchangeably, but when it comes to historic preservation, uh, they have very specific meanings when we're talking about them. So first one is preservation, which is basically maintenance, and that is the ideal treatment approach, if possible. Uh, the next one is restoration, which is bringing a building back to a certain point in time. Uh, we see this one very often because, um, you know, modern updates and changes are usually necessary in the building. Rehabilitation, which is also known as adaptive reuse, is perhaps the most common and one of most communities use in their design review process. This is the alteration of the building for new or updated use, not retaining its historic character. And then reconstruction, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, and it's also relatively rare and only used in special circumstances. All right, real quick, I'm going to pause it. So, um, oh, yeah, I didn't pause it. Um, essentially, there's four different types of preservation. So, and we use the terms almost synonymously, at least three of them. We use, uh, uh, we use things like preservation a lot. We use things like rehabilitation a lot. Uh, but in, as she made the point, there are four distinct uh, approaches. Preservation is you've got a very good historic resource in beautiful condition and you're preserving it, right? Um, other ones um, allow a degree of more flexibility. And so things like rehabilitation, which we use a lot, and our standards specifically refer to rehabilitation is what she's going to talk about more here in a little bit, because that is the most common preservation approach. So just want to sort of make that clear as we're going. So, let's all right. Yeah, here. <laughs> okay, so let's discuss rehabilitation since it is the most common treatment approach. Um, so as I said, it's a process of returning a property to a state of utility through repair or alteration, uh, which makes possible and efficient contemporary use while preserving, you know, basically preserving what makes the building significant um, and those features, uh, architectural design features. So here we can see an example of rehabilitation, uh, which is an automobile, automobile garage converted to offices. Um, and we're also going to post in the chat window now um, some illustrated guidelines for uh, these standards so you can uh, follow along if you'd like or uh, get more specific questions answered. So I'm going to go through all 10 standards as quickly as possible. Um, I'm just going to briefly touch on them, but like I said, check out that link for the guidelines if you want more information on this. So standard number one is to choose an appropriate use. Um, so this says that a property will be used as it was historically or be given, given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. So, here we can see some examples of uh, a new use that is not appropriate and historic theater in Detroit that was turned into a parking garage. And obviously, we lost a lot of historic features in the process, so that would not be an appropriate use. Um, the modern example is a gas station that was turned into a restaurant. So that required very minimal changes to the historic character of the building, um, so that would be appropriate. Number two is to retain historic character. The historic character of the property will be retained and preserved. The removal of distinctive materials or alteration of features, spaces, traces, and spatial relationships that characterize the property will be avoided. So, uh, the main takeaway here is that small changes can make a big difference, uh, especially when they are multiplied. As you can see in the top photo here, uh, we see the historic house. I mean, they're both historic houses, but the one that has retained its features on the left and one that has lost them on the right. Um, and this can be simple things, you know, just siding changes, as we're seeing in the bottom photos here, uh, that can change the depth of windows. Uh, and, you know, if you have a lot of these smaller changes, you can have a big impact on the uh, historic character of the property. Number three is 
green and show that the building uh, tells true story of development. So um, we actually see this more often um, than I would like, uh, but it's pretty surprising. People are willing to put forth a lot of effort to add, you know, conjectural features to a building or you know just fake this art things that they think would look nice, uh, but that the building never has. So here we have an example of a historic home that had craftsman details added, um, even though it was never, you know, obviously never a craftsman house. So you just want to avoid making fake houses, essentially, by standard number three. Uh, standard number four retains sort of changes if they are significant. Uh, so obviously, you know, building change over time, and we need to respect that. Um, and the National and State Register criteria are written in such a way that it does respect those changes over time if they happen historically. Uh, so here we have a nice example from the building in, I believe this is in Leadville. We had some changes to the storefront on the bottom level in the 1950s. Obviously, it was built in uh, let's see, 1910. Uh, but those 1950s changes are now historic as well, and so they are now significantly over it. So we would want to preserve those as well. And here's another good example of um, changes over time that you would want to preserve um, because this is rehabilitation and not a restoration. Uh, we want to keep the bottom storefront, even though it is not what was originally there, it's still the historic storefront. Number five, retain character defining features. And if at this point you're, sound, you're thinking this all sounds a little repetitive, that's because it is. Uh, we're just trying to preserve the sort of materials. Um, so, you know, character defining features that can be, you know, sort of details like doors, windows. Um, here we see the brick pointing techniques. Um, as a whole, these can all make a big difference on the integrity of the property. Number six, this one's pretty easy. We want to repair rather than replace. Uh, so, we most often see this with windows. Uh, we want to Repair and sort windows rather than replacing them. Uh, if if a feature is missing and so it has to be replaced, uh, you want to make sure that's substantiated by documentary and physical evidence rather than just what you think might be good. Number seven is also pretty easy. The thing you use the gentlest means possible. Uh, really, all this means is please, please, please do not sand blast your building. Uh, <laughs> um, you just want to make sure you're using the gentlest means that you can to achieve whatever you're trying to. So here we can see a good example of some bricks that have been horrifically damaged by sandblasting, and then compared to this person that's just uh, washing some stone and soap and water to take it to fill that ball. That would be the ideal. Number eight, uh, protect archaeological resources. So this one's also pretty straightforward. If you are, you know, if your project involves digging or you just happen to have some on your site, uh, you just want to make sure that if you have to disturb archaeological resources, that mitigation measures will be undertaken in the process. So that's a great one to ask. So you come to the webinar next week and ask our assistant state archaeologist about it. Number nine, protect your have to do with additions. So number nine is to design sympathetic additions. So new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction will not destroy historic materials, features, and spatial relationships that characterize the property. Uh, more importantly, the new work will be differentiated from the old and will be compatible with the historic materials, features, size, scale, and proportion. So obviously yeah. that's um, a little more vague than the other ones. There's a lot of ways that you can design an addition that's going to be appropriate. So there's no, you know, black and white, yes, no, this is going to be a good addition and this isn't. And that's when we can run into some um, difficulties, you know, with the design process that I was talking about. Uh, but the nice thing is there's a lot of room for uh, creativity in the process. So, you know, if an architect is designing an addition, there's lots of options. So here we have an example of a synthetic condition. Um, obviously, it's the 
basically the entryway and elevator access on the right, you know, the addition is set back, but they've tried to carry over similar colors, um, the rhythm of the windows um, is all similar materials, you know, brick, but it's not exactly the same. So they haven't made it look as if it were there all along, uh, but you don't, you know, your eyes aren't drawn to it. That's the one. And then number 10 is to make additions reversible. Um, so that just means, you know, if you have to remove the addition in the future, you want to make sure that you still retain the integrity of the historic property um, and that it's not ruined beyond repair. So we see that a lot. Um, you know, if you were going to add a second floor to a house, obviously that's going to irreparably change that house. So no, that would not meet this standard. But if you're going to add an addition to the rear, as you can see in this example, uh, you can make that entrance through an existing window or an existing door. So if you were to take off that addition at some point in the future, um, all you would have to do is put that in there. All right. So that's what I wanted. I wanted you to see that because, you know, I find I find that helpful, especially because, I mean, it's literally those 10 things that we have as our standards, right? Uh, a property shall be used for its historic purpose. We have put exactly those standards from the Secretary of Interior Standards into our code as the guidance for how we're gonna treat historic properties in the district. And so some of the things that are I mean, that I think are really emphasized in the presentation that she says is repair rather than replace, right? Try and keep as much historic material on the building as you possibly can. You know, stuff like that. Uh, try and maintain the character defining features. Um, let me get here, because that is fundamentally how these standards too are written, the Secretary of Interior standards. And when you go to their standards on things like uh, rehabilitation, you'll see that the same 10 standards are in there as standards for rehabilitation. Yeah, Curtis. I have a question about the, one of the examples she used. I think it was a firehouse there where they did the addition with the elevator access. Yeah. Um, she spoke about color. That's something we can't really touch, is it? We don't really talk about color at all. And what would we do? Do we talk about color as, I know we can't talk about color like paint, but say someone did an addition on one of these brick buildings downtown, like to the rear or something. Um, can we regulate what color brick they use? Uh, we could potentially do something like we could potentially do something like that. I mean, we do regulate too that you're not supposed to paint on brick. Unpainted right, but brick brick, brick varies so much in color. I mean, what if someone say, I mean, this brick is your typical clay color okay. brick. What if somebody wanted to do an addition with an inappropriate, what we would consider inappropriate, like a tan color brick? I mean, is that something that I never thought about it till I heard her mention color and I looked at that addition. It would seem common sense to use the same colors, but what if someone came to us? Well, with, if you could get the same colors, I mean, that's the thing. Well, or even similar, but yeah. what would, could we really turn down an application on brick color? Um, I think it would be on something that you would, you would want to, you would do it based on this does not effectively address the compatible. It would have to be related <laughs> to this standard nine here. Uh, well, not just wait. Uh, yeah. The compatibility with but, historic materials. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. And so you would want to do something like that. Now, I will say there are things in state law, especially regarding housing nowadays, that you're supposed to use clear and objective standards. Um, to to regulate housing now, um, and so if we were to try and hang our hat on a compatible material and were to deny an application, especially that included housing based on 
its incompatibility with the material, I think that we would potentially be at a fairly high risk for a lawsuit. Uh, so, uh, so just uh, just sort of going through these because I think looking at these every now and again is is important. And I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, I, I feel like I haven't explored these too often with you guys. And, and so, I mean, but neither have your predecessors. Right. This is the most learning we've had, and you guys get volunteers in here who don't know what they're doing, but that they want to help in the city that they live in. Right. And then they're like, here, write a right. code. Um, like you just said, we frown upon or we don't allow painting of brick, but Taylor's is painted. We allowed all that painting sorry, of that brick. Painted? Taylor's. Taylor's. Oh, it's we we yeah. talked about that. Um, Mural. And, and oh, part of it was already, it was white. like just a portion because it was already painted to some degree. It wasn't painted. Not when I moved here. So what I'll just say is oh, if, okay. if we look at, if we look at stuff like brick. this, um, I mean, this is their little introduction to the rehabilitation section. Now this document has each four treatments, right? But when we focus on the rehabilitation, it talks specifically about like, it sets out um, the goals first. And so it says, identify, retain, and preserve historic materials and features. That's like the goal, right? Like, and it's, you'll remember my analogy with things like, I think about it as like a wetland. And I, and now at this point, I'm like, no, I, I think about it as a resource, right? If it's a resource, you try and maintain what's valuable in the resource, right? You try and minimize impacts to it, and then if you can't minimize impacts to it, then you, you impact it, right? So as you're going down that road, I think it's important to know what exactly the resources are, right? What what is what is it that makes up this building? And so, identify, retain, and preserve historic resources, protect and maintain historic materials and features, and then repair, right? And then, if necessary, replace. And so you can see that it sort of goes down that thing where it's the goal is uh, retain the features up, up front. To address Jennifer's point, which is a good point, if I recall when that application, we were concerned about the painting, but so much of the front of that building had been, for better, lack of a better term, destroyed over the years. And to make it look, uh, how should I say, I don't want to say compatible because that's not the word I'm looking for, uh, coherent. The, that was a, and like you said, it's sort of like a wetlands thing. We had to balance the, the, the pros and the cons and to make it look like a coherent storefront. I think that's why we approved that because we did talk about that, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it was before my time uh, for certain. So, I mean, let's just look at some of these because it goes through then each treatment. And so it says, you know, the same thing, identify, retain, and preserve masonry features that and these are recommended. These are the recommended uh, things. So identify, retain, and preserve masonry features that are important in defining the overall historic character of the building, right? So know what those are and then what's not recommended is removing or substantially changing those features, which are important in defining the overall historic character of the building, right? It's, it's uh, here's a not recommended, applying paint or other coatings such as stucco to masonry that has been historically unpainted, right? Um, I mean, the bank got painted too. The bank was already painted too. The bank was already painted, painted over there. It was, and I mean, even in our historic, the 1989 bank, in there as a uh, so it was painted red. Uh, yeah, it, 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 they've also there's been several buildings that were painted downtown that weren't originally painted, but they've been painted since before the '80s, and they've repainted them like uh, those. What's the sports bar there? That one arena. They, arena. They they changed the paint color. It's, it's sort of like we can't. 
make people uh, remove a alteration. So if it's already painted, it's kind of it's a done deal. They're just right. and I mean I guess that that's really the part of the message is like when you remove historic features, a lot of ways there's no going back. Yeah, that's the I mean, problem. The amazing thing to me is if when I was looking at the 1989 detonation document just recently, I realized, oh my goodness, look, downtown actually looks more historic than it did in 1989. So in that case, we have brought it back to historic stuff, but but a lot of times with houses and whatnot, it's really difficult to then go back to something that looks historic um, or that I should say, you can go back to things that look historic. It's impossible to go back to historic, right? If you destroy those features. Um, so, I mean, you can sort of get a sense of some of that there. Um, I'll just uh, go down. I mean, here's another thing. It says, yeah, don't clean with uh, abrasive methods, right? And so it shows another bit of masonry that's damage. Um, just scrolling down just so we can see. I'll go to the wood section because we have a lot of wood in town. Again, it says identify, retain, and preserve wood features that are important in defining the overall historic character of the building. It's, uh, it's not recommended to remove a major portion of historic wood from a facade instead of repairing it or replacing only the deteriorated wood. Uh, and then reconstructing the facade with a new material to achieve a new improved appearance, right? It's uh, it's not recommended to uh, remove wood siding or other covering from mug structures that were uh, yeah, I think the idea. Uh, so they want you to preserve and maintain or protect and maintain wood features, right? Uh, and so this sort of shows what they recommend is sort of putting in wood features that are similar where it's deteriorated wood, right? Stuff like that. Um, and it talks about just a whole bunch of various treatments uh, that it recommends. This is interesting. I thought this was really cool. Um, Smooth surface cementious siding may be used to replace deteriorated wood siding on secondary elevations that have minimal visibility. And so you can see the difference between this siding and the historic wood siding on this side, right? And they say, hey, if you do something like this, do it on the site where it's not visible. I thought this was totally interesting. It says cementious siding with a raised wood grain texture is not an appropriate material to replace historic wood siding which has a smooth surface when painted. And so this hmm. is one of those faux cementious. Right. So why would we want to encourage? Why would we why would we want to approve uh, a restor uh, rehabilitation where they change from wood to basically what is it, a hardy plank or something? Right. And it is already plank. And I mean, uh, a great example is you remember uh, what was the guy's name? Tyler Tyler Cole, who did uh, the blue house over there on 4th Street. You remember that he took some of the wood off the back of that building and he put it on the front of the building, right? And he took, he salvaged stuff from the sides and the rear of the building and he put it on the front. And then the stuff that was not visible, he put the cementious, he put the hardy plank on those sides. Why wouldn't we want to require wood when there's wood available? I mean, it's, and I, I understand the argument, but why would we, why would, what's the virtue of approving that? I mean, Hardy Plank can be historic in certain, can, uh, certain cases. I mean, I think it was what, invented around the 1880s? It's, I think 90s. part of it is cost. It, yeah, it, it does cost a whole lot less to do Hardy Plank. Uh, Plus, it's available now. I mean, you know, getting wood oh, and stuff. What, what side is available? Well, well right. I mean, ultimately, it's because the Secretary of the Interior says so. 
If he says it, then that's what we have to do, right? Are these, are, this isn't from the secretary, is it this? It says right at the top, it, the secretary, secretary of the interior. interior standards. And we have flexibility to, I mean, because we are not required, we have flexibility to, to weigh each case because that's how our code talks about it. So what would we, the virtue is what you're saying is, is a cost alternative for the for the applicant? Potentially, especially if you're maintaining the the street portions of the, the building. The facade, the, yeah. The facade of the, the building. Historic buildings. part part especially. Well, yeah, because that picture of the two uh, sides of the buildings, you know, how many people are gonna see the difference? I mean, right. how and wide with, is that? Like with that, shoulder width? You, you with know that Tyler old building. Remember the back of the building was super close to that back property line, right. too. Yeah. so it wasn't going to be seen by anyone, literally. Anyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And so, uh, and I mean, many side yards are like are like that. Like very few people are going to see Anything. certain certain building side yards. Um, so I mean, that's and I mean, it says that we have a degree of. Uh, this is our code shall be applied to rehabilitation projects in a reasonable manner taking into a, into consideration economic and te technical feasibility so if we get an application we for someone that's wanting to do that we should in the application we should recommend that they put the cost differential i i do think what i always tell people is before you say that you need to move to this side because honestly, what we get all the time is we want to do this because it we or we're gonna fix up this house, we're gonna remove this siding, and it's like, or we're gonna remove these windows. And my statement is always, you please explain why these windows need to be removed and show the work that you've done to. to, to so that's a super. How should I say? super vague term that they use reasonable yeah i mean we could have seven different opinions up here of what's reasonable well right well, yeah. it's true okay so um fair enough so anyways sort of going on i mean and you folks can look at this stuff i mean we'll look at a couple of examples here uh, and just a little bit, we can see some of this. Uh, this is gross. I know that windows are coming up. Um, windows, because we get windows all the time, right? The goal is identify, retain, and preserve windows and their functional and decorative features, right? It's not recommended removing or substance, substantially changing windows or window features, which are important in defining the overall historic character of the building. I heard one time that windows are like the eyes of the building, and it's like, I tend to agree with that, and, you know, it's like, they, uh, and when you change the window, it really does impact uh, the whole appearance of, of the building. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things in here about windows. What I'll just say is, you know, historic windows are, have, depth to them. They have little ridges. If they've got multiple lights, they look, they've got many, you know what a light is, it's separate panes of glass, right? right. Uh, those separate panes of glass, if you take that out and you put in a single pane of glass, it changes the look of the building, mm -hmm. right? Just fundamentally. Uh, and that's really what they, they don't want to do. Now, a number of the, the Secretary of Interior Standards don't discourage that absolutely one of the things that uh we get all the time is uh folks will say we want to replace our windows because of energy efficiency well uh there's a whole bunch of research out there that uh the return on changing your windows isn't as great as a lot of folks think um anyways Get off that real quick. Let's look at some examples. I mean, is that sort of making sense um, so far? Any questions about any of that? Then let's look at this document real quick, because this is back to our designation document. 
And as we look at this, we have and we've got a whole bunch of pictures. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to do something like let's look at where these buildings are nowadays. Standing on my head. Yeah, no, I'll flip them. Hold on, let me get down. Cool. That's the one I want to start with. All right, let's look at this one first, because this is just the best example, right? Here we go. When I saw this house, I was like, dude, that's a new house when I first saw it. Uh, but it's not. It's actually an old house. Uh, it says that it was, I wrote in the stats. This one. It's difficult to believe of that Dutch barn looking configuration. Looks like a oh, ham operator. Amazing. Let me pull let me pull open. So look at this, look at this building. What do you guys see as some of the historic character kind of hybrid. That, that are on this building? And hold on, let me pull it out. Pull the it roof. Up. The roof is interesting, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, it, it, that building would completely change if that roof pitch was ever changed, wouldn't it? Right. Anything else? Porch. The porch. The porch. It's an interesting porch. What are the defining? What are some interesting features that we see on the porch? Well, the, the posts. The fretwork is that original? Yeah, well, I mean, it looks it looks pretty dang old if it's not original. It doesn't look. It looks like it might not be. Honestly, it's an interesting. Whoever added that, that's some interesting. That's an interesting feature on That's that. like Queen Anne fretwork. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I, I would be willing to wager that that fretwork is not original to the structure. But look at that, that pillar that's there. Mm -hmm. There's the, also right the, in the front. The up, post. On the top the of it. One. Up by the. No, uh, up there, there. Yeah. Isn't, is that the same <coughs> stuff the, as yeah, it's, there? it's the same stuff um, in it, honestly. It's where, if it's the second or third resident, but it was done 80 years ago. You know. Probably acquired its own significance at well, this maybe. point. All right, so what else do we see on the building that is uh, historic, that is that lends to the character of the building? The windows? The windows, the windows absolutely. I mean, look at those windows. Well, in the back, too, the way that, um, I don't know if that's a covered porch it's or, thing yeah, right, right. That looks like an addition. Something they put on the bathroom. Maybe a bathroom or something. All right. Mudroom or something. Or the kitchen. I mean, so, you know. Based on that, let's look at this then. And what has changed? The windows. Hmm. Well, there's a put fence the in the circular. front. <laughs> they removed the front work. And they put that circle up in the top. They changed the... What each, happened uh, to the roof? Yeah, the circle, <laughs> the windows. Those are the are definitely oh different. the door door is definitely different and they've the added steps. an addition off to the right the steps on the porch yeah yeah and so I mean look at this the siding's different yeah. the windows are even just this is a casement window now instead of those which opened up, opened and, down. up and down double hung right. And yeah. changing the window arrangement too, I also imagine. Oh, excuse me, and, and changing the siding too. Yeah. A lot of times when you add siding to a building, you change the window uh, trim work. Right. And so when I see some of this right. stuff right here, I anticipate that this is not necessarily the same stuff that we see there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we see that when we see this little sill right here. Um, is not here mm -hmm. right again yeah somebody mentioned this little spider web circle <laughs> well, yeah. that is not um that is not there uh, i think the roof isn't the roof on the porch different no the roof on the porch might be a different type of roof it's the same angle though is it the same angle yeah okay oh but they took the uh corners things down Right. Oh, they took the front work down, yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, let me just see one thing. No, and this was on F Street? This is on F Street. Yep. And so um, yeah. when we look at this, 
then oh, um, there's a chimney there. this building i mean obviously was was called out in the original designation document as something kind of unique right yeah. and when we look at this this is no longer a I don't believe this is a contributing structure. No. It's no. What did it look like when it was put in? Oh, it looked like the original, that picture. So when did those changes happen? I don't know. Uh, I mean, we can see what it says uh, about this just real quick. Uh, I'm going to have to, let me, uh, let me see if I can. So it. this is one of those instances after it was made a contributing structure where someone modified it and they didn't get caught. Well, they should have had building permits. Um, Are there any dates? I don't see any dates. I mean, you, you get these door and window salesmen come around, and I get them all the time, and you know, I say, "Oh, you can. We can change your your siding to, to vinyl and your windows and all this." I said, "No, you can't." So here it is right here. This is what it says about that building. Um, it's a secondary structure. This one and a half it's story home. The both front and back, side to side. It has a central gable running front to back with dormers and birds. There is a one story shed roof on the north elevation. So any, this is the only Dutch colonial oh, style yeah. house in Independence, right? Um, for many years, this home was occupied by the Guild family. Mrs. Lois Guild was the librarian for the city of Independence oh. for many years. And so, you know, you just, uh, so I guess I bring this up because, you know, we get these requests for things like window or, uh, or uh, siding changes. And I mean, in, in themselves, it seems like, oh yeah, that's not really a big deal. But it changes um, but I mean in a lot of in a lot of ways um, what what can happen is it just removes the the character of the building and so um, that house is no longer contributing resource let me ask them if they apply to do something though that you, we have to go with the designation that it currently it's holds under. correct so that would be, well, we be treated involved. as contributing even though it's non-contributing sort of like we have a few right. non-contributing yeah. that are actually would qualify as contributing like the one on third and uh b yes oh what right and i think that will, they they look back on that the reason it was listed as non-contributing is they just couldn't see it for all the growth around it but that's that's still we still treat this huh? as contributing. <laughs> yeah, mine is too. How do you go to? Let's just look at uh, at least one more. So, um, <coughs> flipping right along. <laughs> I think it was just the next. That one. one. I love that house. It's this one. Oops. <laughs> I flipped it the wrong Maybe. way. Oh, now I've lost it too. It like jumped me. What is? Oh, there's the school. There's a school upside down. I mean, talk about school, talk about changing that. the windows. Talk about changing the windows, but look, even the school had a little tower thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know why it's jumping me like that. All right. Um. Watch the number when you pull it up. 280 we're on 280 and shoot i had photo h 280 so this house what do we see as character oh, defining features of this one the great porch great porch yep well and that's the roof the, the, way the, roof the, 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 yeah. the shutters are original the roof is definitely one of them the dormers are definitely one of them what else do we see the window trim window trim is pretty distinctive pretty distinctive pretty detailed mm -hmm. yeah a big part here and a nice sill underneath also i mean you can't really see it in this picture but i looked at it enough to see it is these are windows? storm windows right here these oh. are storm windows on the outside and this right here is 
lights so we can the separate light so you can see the lights on the window oh yeah right and so right. you got one big piece here and then right. a whole bunch of lights right here mm -hmm. i assume it's here and i can see it here right um i just can't really see these so i don't know what's going on up here all that much you now can't... let me uh go to this one um anything else that you see we might as well always say sighting right yeah, you right. see the siding. The siding is nice and uh, woody. Nice good shape, yeah. Um, and I mean, that might actually have a, a little uh, a little groove in it, just based on how it's laying on the on the building, right? See that. It's hard to tell. Hard yeah, to tell. Like to um, let me pull up this one. Uh, oh, Corval. Yeah, you can see it on the other All side. Right. Corval. So this one has a tree in front of it. Um, here we go. This is the same building, and I'm sorry, we're not going to get a good, quite a good view of it, but this is not contributing now. We can see um some of the things just from this angle what do we see from this angle based on this anything well the, the shutters color, it looks changed. like they closed in the porch and i guess that they took out the shutters they took out the shutters, shutters. yep the, sh the shutters aren't original no no house in independence had shutters originally yeah right i mean it was one of those probably an improvement right. And on the porch, yeah, right where you're showing the railing and right in there. Yeah, potentially that's not how it was. It. Yeah. yeah, potentially. What do we see about these uh, trim around the windows? Well, it looks like the top board's been changed, but it's hard to tell with those colors. It, yeah, it's yeah. it's hard to tell. Okay. Yeah. That's the color is yeah um, they got rid of that oh, that top yeah, board the, had the, the, oh, pro, the top protruding the molding the or whatever yeah, right. yeah and probably the bottom board too yeah, yeah. the bottom windows yeah too. so in this instance and i mean the one designation document i'm pretty certain it says that this is hardy plank siding now so what i think oh. they probably did is they just took the hardy plank they put it on top of the old stuff, and then the window space was different. And so okay. rather than having the depth, I think they just sort of put a cover over everything. And so now it's just sort of, it pulled, by go, going out, it messed up the reveal of the window, right? Yeah. Makes sense. And so also I'll call out, these are different windows now. Yeah, they look different. This is, the superficial plastic windows Mullion, uh, mullions with the mullions i really do not like superficial plastic windows because there's no depth in them um, and you can see this here and definitely this had two rows of that stuff yeah. those now have one row of that stuff right oh. uh, so that's a change as well Again, now this building is a non-contributing building based on um, those those changes. Right. Um, I'll just because it's kind of interesting. I'll read this one to you. This is five three six. Five three six South. It's a one and a half story. It was made in nineteen ten. It was a secondary contributing structure. Um, one and a half story multi gable roof with composition shingles. I guess what I think is interesting is this house was used as a Baptist church parsonage for approximately 40 years, right? This was, uh, you know, an important house in the community for a number of years. Uh, and so um, just. So I have a question as other than the training purpose of, of, that you're going through this yeah. is there a subtle hint to resurvey the district okay no. 
No, I'm just curious. Nothing like that. Uh, well, I mean, I honestly think it's appropriate. We've talked about it in the past. Yeah, it might be. It might be. It might be worth it. You know, I put out that request for proposals, and we didn't get any responses. So it's quite <laughs> possible that we need to rethink that. So that might be a good use of use of the funds just to. I mean, it, it seems like it would be great to have an accurate survey of the of the district. Yeah, I think the last one was done what 2014 or 12. Somewhere. 12. Yeah, you know, so it's been over a decade since the last survey. Hmm. There's other ones too. That I could show you. Going to show you a house, and I mean, I guess I've just been thinking about this because I, I, I mean, I guess the message that I just want to give is, you know, as we get these things, let's just wait, let's understand how we're supposed to treat stuff like this, um, um, and uh, strive to to retain as much as possible uh, because even things like this can cause some uh, relatively significant changes to the district. The story I was going to tell is my house is uh, it's not a contributing building. Uh, it looks historic. When I look at it, it's like, oh yeah, that looks historic. But things like that happened to mine over time have removed it from any sort of they put uh, vinyl siding over it at one point, so I mean, I could take off that vinyl siding. Um, but the vinyl siding, too, like I said, raised up to a certain point, so it covered all the wood detailing on the windows, right? And so yeah. there's not the same reveal there anymore, so you can't even tell what those windows look like on the outside. I can still see the historic windows on the inside because I have storm windows uh, on top of them. Right, mm -hmm. but just those those changes, you know, you don't think, oh, it's just site. I mean, you think, oh, it's just siting. Well, it's still going to be a historic house, but in fact, it's it has the potential to to change the historic house. Um, and so, um, so I guess, and we will get more like this because as we're dealing with people and resources in the district, they want to add site, they want to change the site, they want to add different windows, they want to you sure. know, get the request all the time. So My worry is the ones that we don't see. Yeah. Yes, right. That's it true. just happened. <laughs> it's yeah. true. There's, there's some funky stuff that's happened in the district over time, and you're like, wow, that, um, I'll show you one house. Um, It's that time of year where stuff can happen on a weekend. Really There's that is. one that's behind the school that you were just showing. It's kind of great that they put some really funky windows on when they, they did something to it and closed the porch. It was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's one. This is one. Like, this is not a contributing structure anymore, <laughs> but it's like, look, you can sense so much of the historic character here. We can't see it. They can't oh, see it. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, that right, one's that really one. been tinkered with. Right. But, I mean, so you look at this, you're like, wow, there's the historic character, but just yeah, like but look the at the top said, of it. Uh, when you add a second story to the building, you right. substantially like alter the. Oh sure. You the, should see it from the other from the the, uh, the west side. It's really, it's really been. Is there any way to go and take a look at the? The exit. No, the other Around side the where the truck is. Oh, where the truck is, that driveway. It's really. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. boy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, yeah. yeah, it's really been monkeyed with. I look at that and it makes me sad because wow. I think what it could be. Right. I mean, even this house right here, this house. He's been actually making it closer. He's made it closer, but I mean, it's really it's, interesting. Yeah. You just think, 
they enclosed this. This used to be a porch all the way. I've looked at this house a number of times. Right. I've talked about okay. that. It was here. Here. You can see, like, when you look at this, this used to be a porch. Uh, an enclosed porch right here. Oh. Well, it got enclosed at a certain point and it removed the symmetry from the building. Right. And so and then they took the stairs off the side instead of off the front. Right. Exactly. So the stairs were going in. So we tried to bring the stairs out this way, but it's still. It looks better now, but yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the one that I think you were talking about, Curtis, I'll go show that one because it's another one of those ones where you're like, that's that's a historic house. Yeah. Somebody did, who came in and did some training with us a few years ago pointed that out as an example of. You know, I think it's this one. No. I think this house, from my perspective, I love this house. I just think this is the coolest house. But again, this is not a historic house. And this is not a contributing resource mm -hmm. in the district because of what's happened to this right here with the T111. Oh, and yeah. Up Close. The front porch. Right. Where's the, uh, can you go to the map again? Okay, so where's the school? Um, so go to the west on C. It's one of those houses that you had the cursor near just right in there I somewhere. Think, I think, yeah. It's That's the one. one. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> what did he do? They enclosed wow. the porch. They added that really weird window. Um, it, it's, yeah. What about yeah. the one next to it? We actually did a gave a grant for them for some yeah. restoration next to it. That one's yeah. actually pretty good. But yeah, you can see where the porch was. Went to. Oh. And then they added that, that five sided window. Or, yeah. You know, but the thing is that, I mean, it's, it's bad to see this, but the other thing is that some of these houses that are kind of historical are fought, literally falling apart because there aren't people that you know either own it and have enough money to to keep it in good shape or whatever you know and then we just lose that resource yeah we just you know there's no you know it, i think with real estate values that's happening less and less i mean there's a few homes where they're already past the point of no return that are just sitting around. But I think the demolition by neglect, I don't think there's gonna, with the increase in property values, is not gonna bring any new candidates into that category. I mean, there's definitely a couple of houses that are still, um, that I mean, would, would benefit from doing some checking in. So I don't know, I guess that was kind of what I wanted to talk about. Talk about. Um, I guess, are there any questions about that? Is that helpful at all? I mean, I guess all of these resources are online. <coughs> um, the Secretary of Interior Standards, they read fairly well, right? And I think just getting the basic concept, like if it's historic now, retain it to the degree that you can, right? If it's uh, decayed, try and repair just that section. If it's substantially decayed and it needs to be replaced, then just replace that part and try and do it with compatible materials, right? And in a way that looks the same. Uh, uh, I think that's, I mean, that's one key component of Guys' role, I guess I just wanted to explore that a little bit. Refresher is always good. Yeah. Um, are you done with that? Yeah. Jennifer's brought in some information to us. Jennifer, did you want to talk to us about it? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> especially based on what Fred just said, you know, wanting things to if to match to look right. Um, what I brought in was what I generally reference when arguing with our infill standards um, and this is from restore oregon um, they used to be called something else historic or historic preservation league of oregon something like that um, i'd have to look it back up but um 
this is like especially good that Fred went over these things with us um, because for me, I'm not seeing that our infill is respecting or compatible with the things that we have in our historic district. It's not respecting the district whatsoever. And this I reference a lot. So I brought it for you guys to look at. Um, and it talks about a new building that looks like a spaceship dropped into a historic neighborhood, which unfortunately I think we've written our code to allow. Um, and, and so this is where my frustration comes in and they have like the Secretary of the Interior, um, they have their own principles like of seven, I think it's seven, seven things that make for compatible infill. And I talked about it last time that the district is the resource, not its individual parts and that new construction will reinforce the historic significance of the district, which, you know, had I known when I first volunteered to be on this committee, like, I don't even know how many years it's been now, but it sucks to learn as you go in a way because you don't know what you don't know. And had I known half of this stuff, then when we were writing the code for I don't even know how long, I know you guys wrote it, you were writing it even before I came along, like I would have had way more questions. I would have had way more input because maybe I would have known more. But what I see now in this paperwork is that we screwed some stuff up and it's really unfortunate because are there specific instances in the code that you can point to where we're failing? Um, in our code or in, in what? In our code. In our code. Um, no, because I didn't go over that with a fine tooth comb. But I mean, let's see which one did I say. We say, and it's before, it's on the page, it's page seven, it's in the upper right hand corner what makes a good guideline. Um, there's a graphic on the lower right that shows recommended and to avoid. And we just did the opposite on second and D. We did the we did exactly what it says to avoid. Except the other buildings in the vicinity, there are some pretty big buildings. They're all big buildings but in the vicinity. Even the movie theater. Right there directly across the street is not that big. The library is not as big as the one we approved. The house next door is not as big as the one we approved. And the house on the corner, kitty corner from what we just approved or you guys approved is not as big. So those four corners right there do not have anything that is that size. And I get that Stonehenge is there, I get it. And the tower, you know, when you're standing there, you oh, see the yeah, tower. The yeah. That's what you see. Aside from that, I think building. we've we've actually addressed that concern with the talk of the height limitations, haven't we? Yeah. So yeah. I think what I you're think, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're saying is is our height limits were incorrect in the code. That's that's the specific instance, and we're addressing that now. That's the specific one I can think of right now, but I still don't see. A building yeah. of that proportion next to the, the blue house that's there as appropriate so you know and i get now years later that the the amount of overlays we have on some of these blocks are just like mind-blowing and speaking with um mr harris as his project goes and the four overlays that we have on the block that I live on that he's going to build on, you know, these are all things that you cannot possibly know, like, unless you're a city worker or an architect or something who does this for a living. And yet we come on board, some of us come on board to be volunteers and, and it's like, okay, here you go. And that's kind of, I, I, I don't think that's good. And we just got Liz 
And it makes me wonder, I mean, she's in real estate at least. So maybe she has some knowledge, some background knowledge. I'm a teacher. I teach special ed. I don't know any of this stuff. I just knew that I wanted to help my city maintain part of what I moved here for. And I don't feel like I'm doing that anymore. Well, sure you are. You're showing up and you're giving us this stuff. You know, sometimes you don't get pats on the back for doing a lot of this stuff. But I don't that need doesn't a pat mean on the that back. you should not do it. I don't know? need a pat on the back ever. I'm a public well, school okay. teacher. We don't get pats on the back. <laughs> well, I, okay. But, you know, you're showing up. I think the more here. salient point is, is you saw a flaw in the code. You've suggested a change and we're working on it. And what is happening about that, Fred? I mean, you know, we took all our standards and you were going to give it to the planning commission and then. Yep. And what's uh, the story? I am, I am working uh, to try and get that on the July. I think plan. you were also talking about you were going to going to kind of test the waters with council because there wasn't so much have, point right. in working on something that was not. <clears throat> So how I'm how I'm planning on doing it now is um, taking it to planning commission. They were fine with the language as folks had suggested. Um, uh, we're going to have to send out that measure fifty six notice. So that's uh, on my list of things to do this week. Um, so we'll see. That sounds like good progress. Up. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I look at the I, I look at the code the way it was when yeah. I came on on was it fifteen or sixteen, and our code was yeah. bad. They've yeah. been trying to rewrite it for ten years before that. I think, from what I heard from other commission members, mm -hmm. we took a run at a new code three times, and the first two times were, how should I say, less than superior attempts and city manager at the time and, uh, and Fred had just come on, kind of rescued the whole process. And we put together a pretty good co code in short order. Yeah, it's not perfect. We're finding those spots where it's flawed and we're fixing them. And you know what, it would be a whole lot, I mean, honestly, it would be a whole lot easier if, I mean, honestly, from a code perspective, if we had two separate historic districts, it would be really easy to write that code. You mean commercial so, versus residential or what? Yeah, yeah, commercial district, residential district, right? And then you write standards for both, right? We have one district with commercial and residential in it. And we have a whole bunch of different, I mean. There's different guidelines and there's a transitional area. Yeah. yeah, and then we try to like, we tried to like split the code writing. And so we said, okay, commercial properties, you have this set of standards. Properties that look residential, you have these set of standards. And we thought at the time, shoot, that, that works. What we didn't anticipate was that the commercial standards allowed something that was- Too tall. Too tall. Because that went through its own process in the past. Uh, I mean, I did. I well, we do, just, the, it was, come it, on, we do the best we can. Let's not beat ourselves up. And I'll just say, you know. like, honestly, we're, we're, Moving ahead. we're going to get better development on in the residential mm -hmm. overlay parts that we did. We're light years ahead of where we were oh, years, sure. years, a few years ago. You know, Jennifer, but what you're saying is that you're, you know, you're not like a professional architect or something like that. I mean, the way the government should work is like people from all walks of life should be able to put their input into things instead of just having the experts do everything. Absolutely. You know. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, I know it's kind of, it's frustrating because it doesn't seem like it's smooth going and stuff, but. It's still, you know, people taking, people caring because they live here. Of course. My problem was that we were not taught, so that makes sense, right, as a teacher, 
we were not taught the things to look for or, or the things that we needed to know before we started writing things that affect all our lives. But now we are learning. Right? Yep. Well, I think we had an expert in the room that even missed it, and he admits to it. So I'm not sure that if we had been given that 2020 hindsight. Right. I mean, that's true. Uh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Are we done? I think we're done. We're done. Adjourned. All right. Thanks for bringing this on, Jennifer. Yeah. Are you going to make my favorite things to read? I just declared it. All right. Because you know what? You're teaching us. So I was thinking about.